Welcome. My name is Anna and I will be your online Kickstarter guide for video three. In this video, we're going to be exploring Google Workspace and a few of the key applications that we use as part of our PNG Oz partnership activities. As mentioned in video two, the quickest and easiest way to access your Google applications is by clicking on the nine dots next to your profile icon in the top right hand side of the screen. You will notice that all of the applications available to you will appear here. You can add additional applications by scrolling down and clicking on more from Google. While Google offers a wide variety of applications for a diversity of purposes, today we're going to unpack just a few. The ones we're going to explore today are Google Drive, which is a storage space, Google Docs, used to edit text, Google Slides, used for presentations, Jamboard, which is a collaborative creative space that we can work with our teams, Google Meet, which is a video conferencing app, and of course, Gmail. To get started today, we're going to focus in on Google Drive. Google Drive is a cloud-based storage solution that allows us to save files online and access them from any smartphone, tablet, or computer. This means that when we're working together, we don't need to rely on USB drives, having our information saved on our computer, or having hard copy printouts anymore. By having our files accessible on Google Drive, we're able to access them from anywhere in the world, and we're also able to share them with our partnership teams and our friends in other countries. The quickest way to go to Drive is to click on the Drive icon in your workspace applications. Our Drive is our own personal storage space. What you'll find if your account is brand new is that your Drive might be empty. The first thing we would do is to create a folder. Anytime we're creating a new folder or document, the quickest way to do it in Drive is to come up the top left hand side of our toolbar where we see the icon new. Click on that and what we would like to do is to create a new folder. Once you've clicked on the folder, a pop-up will appear. This is where you can name your folder. I'm going to call mine A Guide. Once I create my folder, you will notice that it appears in my drive. From here, we would like to create documents in our folder. To do this, I'm going to double click on my folder. Inside my folder, there are no documents just yet. So to do this, I'm going to click on new, and the first document we're going to open is called Google Docs. If I click on Google Docs, what you will notice is that it's opened a brand new tab. The tab on my left is my drive, and there is a tab on the right called Untitled Document, and I can give it a name. I'm just gonna call it Doc for now. Once I have clicked on Doc, it names the file. Because we're working synchronously online on the internet, everything automatically updates, which means that we don't need to version control and the document is already saved in our folder. So Google Docs is most similar to Microsoft Word. We use this for creating text-based documents and we can insert images and format images. As a student, I might be using Google Docs to produce reports, or essays, or assignments. I do have many formatting options available to me, but most of them are focused on text. To demonstrate some of the text editing functions, I'm first going to write a sentence. Once you have put text onto your Google document, the best way to edit it is to highlight the text. You can edit at any time in all Google applications by highlighting. You will know that Google is trying to edit it because it will always highlight in blue, regardless of whether it's an image, a chart, a table, or text. Up here on the toolbar, I can change the font. I can change the size of the font by adding or subtracting, or to jump font size, I can click on the number and select from the dropdown. I can use bold, 
italic underline. I can change the color of my text by selecting the palette. I can also highlight by selecting one particular word and choosing from the palette. The alignment I can change from left to center to right. And I can also change the line spacing by clicking on the drop down. While documents are helpful for communicating via text, we can also add images. To do this, come up on the top left hand side of your screen where to the toolbar where it says insert. Here you can insert images, tables, drawings, charts or lines. Because Docs is an online application, we're able to upload from our computer. We can search the web for images. We may have images already saved to our G Drive, our photos, or by URL or using the camera on your device. For the purpose of this activity, I'm going to search the web for cute kittens. You can see that the search engine in Google has automatically selected a number of cute kitten images that are on the internet. From here, we can select the image that we would like, insert, and it will automatically appear in our document. To edit our image, as we did with our text, we need to first select it. You know that Google would like to edit the image because there's a blue line around the image itself. What you will also notice is that your toolbar has now changed. The reason for this is that Google recognizes that you're trying to edit an image. You're not editing text anymore. So to edit this image, what I am able to do is resize it by grabbing the corner of the image to make it bigger or smaller. I can also crop it. I've decided that I don't want all of this white space around my kitten. So to crop, I go up here to the top of my toolbar and select the cropping option. I can grab the black line at the corner of my image to crop and resize the image itself. So now the size of my kitten has changed because of how I've cropped it and how I've dragged and dropped my corners. I would like to put a border around my kitten or my image. And to do this, I can come up to the top toolbar and select a border color. I might choose green and I can also choose a border weight. So one point is quite small all the way up to 24. If I were to choose 0.8, you can see that my border has gotten quite thick. I'm happy with my image now. However, it's breaking up its relationship between the text and the image. So if I move it around, you'll notice that it's actually not looking very good because it's disrupting how my text moves. I have options of how I can align this. So to change the relationship that my image has with the text, I can do that by selecting how it sits. I can either ask the image to sit in line with the text, I can ask it to wrap around, which means that the text will wrap around the image itself. I can ask it to break the text. So wherever I put the Im image, the text breaks. I can ask it to go behind or in front. The easiest and best one, if you're formatting text and images together, is to wrap your text, which means that your image will always be seen and so will your text. In this video, we explained how to access Google Drive and how to be able to create folders and documents. You now know how to use Google Docs. In the next video, we're going to continue to dive into Google Workspaces. See you soon.